Snuggie, and I am going to change the world. <laughs> By change the world, obviously I'm talking about reducing our energy use. Do you think this guy is going to save us? Do you think turning down the uh, electricity thermostat, the thermostat for heat in your house by a couple of degrees and the cold, cold winter days that we experience here in Rochester, very cold, very, very cold. No, no, this guy is not going to save us, right? It's a short-term solution to a global change that needs to occur. I'm a human being. You're human beings most of the time. We're all human beings. And we consume energy. It's part of who we are. And technological advances that occur globally are only going to continue to occur. Cutting down our energy use by 1% to 2% globally, which is something we're not even capable of now, doesn't even get close to usurping our global, globally accelerating need for power on a yearly basis. I consume. That's a natural part of who I am as a human being. But I also invent. I invent solutions to the problems that I create for the rest of you, right? We all do this. No more is this going to be acceptable, right? We need solutions for electricity use. We use electricity in all areas of our life, right? Food, shelter, clothing, and now, I argue, power. It runs our schools, our hospitals, our transportation systems, and it's only going to continue to become a more important part of our life. Right? Cars. We're going to move to electric vehicles. We're already getting hybrid cars. We're trashing the cars we have now so that we can have electric vehicles, so that now, instead of driving to the fuel place and plugging in and getting our gas, you're going to plug into this guy. Now, how do, we inflect, how do we inflict changes in behavior of our consumption without creating emotional burden? We shouldn't have to feel guilty that we consume electricity and that more countries around the world are going to continue to increase how much they consume electricity. We need power to survive. It's why we survive longer. It's why we survive healthier and why we're able to strive forward, move forward, create new technology. And we shouldn't have to feel guilty about it. Waste is good, I argue, because it presents an economic opportunity to invent new technology to solve the problems that we face. Over time, our stuff is going to waste less energy. It's just a natural, progressive thing that's going to happen. You want electric vehicles? They need batteries. You want batteries? You need lithium. Are you going to take lithium away from computers so you can put it in batteries for cars, or are you going to continue to buy more and more and more cell phones? Right? So waste is good. Because if we reduce waste and we design to continue to reduce it, that is new consumptive patterns. That's new innovation that was being driven forward. Now, I think there's two areas that we're going to target for energy efficiency campaigns. One is going to be the energy use of our stuff and moving our stuff places. A new country every day invents a new thing that they need to move somewhere that someone's going to use and then throw away so that they can do it all over again tomorrow, right? Like this guy, the Snuggie. And the energy waste of our transportation system, right? This grid that we have, this cardiopulmonary system that connects our power flow from the point of generation to the point of use. It's global. It's not just here. And we need to find ways to level the playing field so that that power that gets generated actually makes it to that outlet. Now, the place in between is what I call the power gap. That's the place that's ripe for innovation with renewable energy supply, right? New solar, new wind, new tidal power, hydroelectric, etc. But in order to commercialize this technology, which we're conveniently just pushing onto the kids, right? Class of 2050, we don't need to really worry about that yet. What we need to do first is narrow the gap, right? Make that stuff cheaper. And that's what we're trying to do with energy efficiency. Making our buildings more efficient, making them waste less, designing interesting technologies into our buildings, into our transportation systems, so that they are more effective. 
so that we can bring them into new markets and people can start to have some of the spoils that we've had for hundreds of years. Now on the other side of that equation is delivering that power. And this area of innovation basically requires that governments and utilities, and no matter what country you're talking about, governments and utilities and companies all work together to create a product of value to you, the end consumer. So don't really hold your breath on that one. It's going to take quite a while. They're all trying to get reelected anyway. And this is the area that I see being something that our kids are going to move forward with, right? Generation of renewable sources of energy to keep, you know, tabs on all of that change that's going to happen that we can't even see happening yet, right? When I was born in 1983, uh, we didn't even, we, we had a Zenith television. I, I couldn't see the iPhone coming. Well, I was one. I couldn't see the iPhone coming. <laughs> This space is very crowded and it's very expensive, right? There are very interesting things happening in off-grid uh, installations of solar in places like remote Kenya or in Costa Rica where they do hydroelectric power most of the time. But really, on the whole, this space is pretty crowded. So in order for us to have this technology ready for our kids to leap forward with, we need to narrow this gap, right? We need to drive down the cost and drive out the inhibitors that will enable them to move forward with this technology. We need to waste less. But not in the way of turning down the thermostat and buying a shitload of these, sorry, mom, I said shit. <laughs> buying a lot of these things and wearing these things, that's not the answer. It's not conservation from the point of it's a behavior change and you have to conserve more because that's fighting our human need to consume and move forward. That's a good thing. So this is the grid, or at least a simplified version of the grid. If you can see, I included windmills in it. The problem with this grid structure that we've had is, is that 55% of the power that we generate gets lost. So all of that lithium and batteries and awesome technology I talked about before that would be used to give us new supplies you're still only going to get about 55% of it at your outlets. Most of this happens in two locations. At the point of generation, no matter what the point of generation is, and at the outlets. Now, the grid itself is pretty efficient, right? You only lose about 9% of it. But at that point of generation and at that point of load, we are extremely wasteful. And I say that that waste presents a huge economic opportunity. Why don't we take the behaviors that we already are moving forward with and just repurpose those behaviors for the point of reducing waste? Why don't we take this guy and use it to automatically turn lights off as opposed to expect people to change their behavior to remember to turn the lights off? I forget to turn the shower off sometimes when I walk out of it. How am I supposed to remember that I have to turn everything off, turn, shirt everything down, you know, make sure I didn't, what, uh, you think that's going to happen when people have electric vehicles? Doubtful. So what we did is try to automate this waste reduction process by taking very smart, intelligent little items and putting them around buildings. This is an office here, right here in Rochester. We put our little devices uh, into right around the office, uh, attached to big, huge energy hog things like printers, no offense, Xerox, <laughs> um, computers, laptops, et cetera, and so forth. And by shutting these devices off when nobody was in the office, nobody cared to use them, and by a second item, by eliminating something we call vampire power, which is standby power if you're a consumer electronic company. And it just means the power that your devices consume when they're not really off. Off is not really off. They're always sucking power. The outlet is always sucking power. And by doing that, we could reduce these companies' energy costs enormously. For one of these companies, it equated to about $2 per employee per day in energy costs. Now, that's huge if you're a big company. And that means you can invest in R&D and hire new kids, and it's just great. It's just great. So what I'm talking about isn't really behavior change on the part of the human being, because that's nice, it's touchy-feely, and we want to see that kind of thing. But it's really behavior change on the part of the transportation system that's going to have a major impact. It's this power gap. It's, it's innovating how much our 
devices consume and automating that process that's gonna create real change. Waste less. Consume power more responsibly. These are not behavior changes that we need to be responsible for. This stuff can all happen automatically. And that's gonna be the biggest bang for your energy buck. And you know who already knows this? Kids. And not necessarily kids in this community, although I like to think so. In Kenya, for example, or India, kids are taught in school that when they go home, they shouldn't waste energy. Unplug the television. In Costa Rica, there's a school called the Lincoln School. They teach their kids, if you put the refrigerator in the center of the kitchen, the refrigerator will consume less energy. Not to say that you should all go home and move your sub-zero into the center of your kitchen, but you get what I'm, what I'm talking about here, right? The behavior change isn't gonna happen with grandma turning down a thermostat and wearing the stupid Snuggie. It's gonna happen when the kids organically let it happen. So I was in San Francisco last week meeting with uh, the Smart Grid Consumer Collaborative, which is basically a ton of companies with, which are VC backed and they're throwing a lot of money at trying to find a way to get you all to buy into smart meters. I got a smart meter for you. It's called your bill. You already get it in the mail. And if you were to just zip open the envelope and peek inside and unfold it, you would see exactly what your meter, smart meter, is going to show you. So, as you can see, it was very difficult for me to tell these companies that I think smart meters aren't a very good idea, or maybe they're not the best use of our technology advancement in this area of energy efficiency. Maybe we should be looking elsewhere first. Maybe we should talk to the kids. Maybe we should see what they have to say. And this is what they came up with. Kill Pluggy. Kill Pluggy, the vampire energy-sucking outlet. Now, there are many ways to kill Pluggy. Just like any evil villain, you need many weapons. Solar power, sunlight, right? Kills him, he's a vampire. Holy water, hydroelectric power. That's been blessed, say our father in front of, in front of Niagara Falls. <laughs> Wooden stakes, which come from planting trees. And garlic, which you can pull out of your compost pile if you have a strong nose. So, weapons, right? What would you guys choose if you were gonna fight Pluggy? If you were a kid and you were gonna fight Pluggy, what would you pick? Yeah, you get to participate in this part, guys. You know, no, not the product I make that's lame. <laughs> Dad, by the way. All right, all right, so, Hydro, I heard somebody say hydro, but let me show you solar first because this is not really a choose your own adventure. I just wanted you to think it was. <laughs> okay, so in the event that you try to put in a home installation of solar at your home, pluggy winds, I'm sorry. Even in the sunniest locations of the world, you're only gonna get five and a half hours of usable stored solar energy a day. That's even with the best batteries that you can buy on the market. And you know what? Pluggy, he's sucking the blood power right out of your outlets 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that five and a half hours, that's gonna be jumped right down if you do anything. Open your fridge, turn up the AC, turn the TV on. So solar's really not gonna work. Hydro, hydro. Now, hydro's been around since 1887. It's older than Pluggy. So you'd think, right, it will definitely beat Pluggy. And you're right, Hydro is clean and it's efficient and it's used almost everywhere in the world. Even politicians can back Pluggy. They're, I mean, it's Pluggy, Hydro, they, they hate Pluggy, anyway. But really not so fast because waterfalls can't move, you can't move them, and you really can't transfer that energy for long distances of, you know, long distances. So in the end, Pluggy wins unless you chase waterfalls. That's a song also, if you guys don't remember it. <laughs> now, if it came down to trying to stake Pluggy, right, you could plant a tree every second of the day and you wouldn't even put a dent in what you'd need to cover your energy cost of riding around town. Composting, now it's easy, it's easy to compost. We should all compost, don't get me wrong, we should all do that, plus plant trees, plus not destroy our rainforest, we should do all of that because it's the right thing to do to protect our biosphere. But in terms of energy consumption, composting really, I mean, that kind of stuff, 
all these tools, they really only weaken Pluggy. They weaken him to a point where you can attack him with what really does him in. And that's unplugging him. If you unplug Pluggy, Pluggy has nowhere to go. And you win. We win. We all win. We defang him. Because that's how you really kill Sound Power. But never mind. Anyway, moving on. So, you know, what does this mean for all of us? You know, we all have these outlets. We all, we all have them. And, and more people get them every day. And, and what, is, what is the big idea? What do we really want? Well, we want affordable energy for everyone in the world. Because I was born in Rochester versus a child that's being born right now in Rwanda. We should all have the same capability to use technology and use power. And just because America consumes more power than any other country, that doesn't mean that we can't also be the ones that forge the way to finding the most efficient technology that we will require in the future. That will give us cheap power for all. Thank you. Thank you.